everybody, welcome back to the Scribble Bookcase. I'm so happy you could join me for another video. This video is going to be all about hand lettering for beginners and just some tips and tricks I've picked up along the way. I've been hand lettering for about a year and so I've definitely had quite the learning curve in that time and honestly, in some ways, I still consider myself a beginner. There's a lot that I still need to work on and practice because this is truly an art form. It's something that is always in development. So I wanted to quick give you a few examples of hand lettering. So my dashboard here is actually a hand lettered piece that I did. I created this for actually my boyfriend's office and then turned it into a piece for my Etsy shop. So this is available in my shop if you like it and are interested. You can check it out. It's a digital download. I printed it out, laminated it, and stuck it right in my journal, but this is a good example of some of the hand lettering I like to do. I really like to mix up fonts, um, do kind of like different styles. You can see the O here is actually like a coffee ring. So be thinking about creative ways to change letters to mix fonts, and that's really going to bring your hand lettering to the next level. But here are some other examples of my hand lettering. I really like this page. You can see some mixed fonts here. Brush lettering, I love this one that I did of some brush lettering with all Tombow brush pens. You can see I created like a little shadow effect as well with black in the background. And you can see here is just my normal handwriting mixed in with some hand lettering. And that's a really key point that I wanted to make first is that hand lettering and handwriting are two totally different things. So. Some people might claim, oh, I have bad handwriting, which first of all, no you don't. Your handwriting is beautiful and unique and totally yours, but hand lettering is different than your handwriting, so even if you think you have bad handwriting, that's okay because your hand lettering is going to be a completely different art form and it's something that has different skills involved and is going to take time and practice to master it. Know right off the bat that your hand lettering is not going to look beautiful from the get-go. And in fact, I wanted to also show you my previous bullet journal. So this is from 2016. I have a whole video on my 2016 bullet journal if you're interested. I'll have it linked down below. But I wanted to show you some of my first pages in here. So yeah, this was probably one of the first pages I ever did. And you can see that I was just using gel pens. I didn't even have brush pens at the time, without a doubt. I have come very far from my beginning days in lettering. So don't get discouraged either. This is from a year ago, guys. So it took me a year to get to the point that I am today. Okay, so enough chit chat. Let's get down to some of the basics. We're first gonna talk about some of the supplies I like to use. For practicing hand lettering, I really, really recommend a very smooth paper. I like to use this HP LaserJet printer paper, but you just want to make sure it's really, really smooth to the touch so that it doesn't fray your pens and so that you don't get that skipping, which can happen sometimes in brush lettering. Obviously, some of the papers I use aren't going to be the smoothest ever because I'm working within my journal and I like to mix up the papers in there, but for practicing, definitely start out with a really smooth paper. So I'm gonna show you my three favorite brush pens and then also show you how you can do faux calligraphy with a plain ballpoint pen. So the first pen I'm gonna show you is the Tombow brush pen. If you know about hand lettering and brush lettering, you probably know about the Tombow dual brush pens because this is a common favorite. Everybody loves to use them because they blend very well. There's tons of color options and they're just really smooth, wonderful, versatile pens. However, I actually do not recommend these pens for super brand new beginners because I think because of their size, they're actually quite difficult to control, at least more so than some other brush pens. And so I'm going to write out letter with these pens to give you an idea. So there's the Tombow brush pen. I just think there's better pens for beginners. These, because they're so big, are hard to control. They tend to skip when you're first starting out and can be difficult to get that smooth transition. Because they're bigger, it also means that you have to typically write bigger. So I do not recommend this necessarily for brand new beginners, but it is a great brush lettering pen after you get a handle on the concepts. 
One of my favorite pens for beginners is actually the Pentel Feud Touch Pen. I talk about these pens in possibly every video <laughs> I've ever had with journaling involved since I've gotten them because they are so smooth, they're the perfect size tip, and you just get a really nice transition. It's very easy to change up the pressure and do the thin strokes and the thicker down strokes. Okay, so there you saw the Pentel View Touch Pen. It was much, much easier for me to write this than it was to write this. Even after a year, I still kind of struggle with the Tombos every now and then, but I rarely have issues with the transitions using this pen. So I highly recommend the Pentel View Touch Pens for beginners. The nice thing about these as well is that they come in different colors, so you can get this set of 12 different colors. And the price point isn't too bad on these either. Last pen I'm going to show you is a newer pen of mine, but it has quickly become my favorite black pen to use, possibly even over the Pentel Few Touch Pens, and that is the Tombow Fudonosuke pen. This is the hard tip. They're, typically you can get a set of two of these with a soft tip and a hard tip. The hard tip the most because it gives me the best amount of control, and this pen is super, super similar to the Pentel Touch Pen. So as you can see, these are nearly identical. If anything, I think the Fudonosuke pen is a little nicer just because I think the color is just a little bit more of a true black. And also the strokes with this in terms of the thin strokes, which is usually what I struggle with the most, is really easy and really fine. If you're super new to hand lettering, you might not want to shell out the money for brush pens, and so I want to quick show you how you can get this same effect using just a plain ballpoint pen. So in this case, I'm going to write out the same word, making sure that I have a good amount of space between my letters. So there it is written out, and you can see I've spaced it a little bit more than I would normally if I was writing it just with my normal handwriting. And then I'm going to go and follow the downstrokes with another line. So if I follow this up, that's an upstroke, so I'm not going to do anything to it. Then if I go down, I'm going to add a line for my downstroke. This is an upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, add a line, upstroke, downstroke, and so on. Okay. So that's kind of a cool effect on its own. You could just leave it like that, but if I'm trying to totally mirror the brush letter effect, then I'm gonna wanna fill it in. So after I create those lines, I'm just gonna go ahead and color in the little space that I've created. Okay, there you go. So you can see that this ballpoint pen really doesn't look all that different than the brush letter pens once it's all said and done. So those are the tools I like to use. Now I'm gonna jump into a few tips and I'm gonna be using from now on the Tombow Fudonosuke pen. I still don't know if I'm saying that right if you've been watching my last video, so correct me if I'm wrong. So my first tip to you is that in order to achieve hand lettering, you have to be mindful of your upstrokes and your downstrokes. So when you're hand lettering, you wanna take your time with it so that you can keep track of when your pen is going up and when your pen is going down. A good way to do this is to just do repeated L's or E's. So for example, you could join me at home and do this along with me. I would do a thin upstroke, very little pressure, just using the tip of the pen and then bring it around and I'm adding pressure and bringing it down. And then I would do a thin upstroke again add pressure, bring it down. You want to have a good amount of pressure but not too much that you're making it difficult to even move the pen down the paper. It should really just glide. And look, if I push too hard, or uh, see? You could actually hear, I don't know if you guys could hear it, but I could actually hear it struggling to go down the page. And you can see those little lines where it was skipping. So. It's going to take time, but you really need to find the right amount of pressure and doing the repeated L's is a good way to do that. But always, always remember, this is like the number one rule of hand lettering. Thin upstrokes, thick downstrokes. Little pressure upstroke, lots of pressure downstroke. 
My second tip to you guys is to take your time. Like I said, hand lettering is different than handwriting. So if I was handwriting the word letter, I would just go letter, right? That would be my handwriting. It's very fast. I'm just getting the word on the page. It's not art. But when I'm hand lettering, I really, really take my time with it. So I'm going to show you letter now like I did before without it sped up so you get a sense of the amount of time that it's taking me to create that effect. So there you go, that took quite a little bit of time to get that down on the page, but it looks a lot better for it. You do, once again, same as with the pressure, want to find balance with the amount of time it takes you. If you go too slowly, it's not going to glide nicely. Figuring out what the happy medium is, is purely going to be through practice. My third tip to you guys is going to make sure to leave enough spacing between your letters. This is probably the biggest mistake I made when I first started out hand lettering is I was trying to give myself the same amount of spacing that I use in my normal handwriting in my hand lettering and that just doesn't work. You need quite a little bit more spacing to achieve a nice effect. If I do them really close together, it gets really hard to differentiate the letters because those thick downstrokes are all like overlapping. So you can see there that doesn't look very nice. So instead what you want to do is have a good amount of space in between your letters. And this is a fun thing that you can vary to get different effects as well. So a lot of people like to do very like drawn out letters. So if you want to create a hand lettered piece, you might mix up letters that are closer together and then some words with letters a lot further apart. My fourth tip to you is probably the one that I hear the least of and yet turned out for me to be one of the most important ones to really mastering the art of hand lettering and that is picking up your pen between letters. It seems almost counterintuitive because you think Hand lettering is such a beautiful flowing process, but I promise you, if you pick up your pen, which one forces you to take your time, it's going to turn out so much better. So when we write cursive in our normal handwriting, the idea is to keep your pen constantly on the page. So if I was to write letter in my normal handwriting, I wouldn't pick up the pen, I would just keep writing. I wrote lettering, but you get the idea. It just looks completely different. If I want to hand letter between every letter in that word, I want to pick my pen off of the page, and then that helps me decide where to place the next letter and allows me some more flexibility in the way that I connect them. If I write letter, I'm going to write my L and then give myself the little end tail. And that's important too. So the little piece that's going to be the connector for your next letter is the last thing you want to end on before you pick up your pen. So I made my little end tail and then I'm going to do my E and I'm going to do that right where the end tail is. Bring it down and then once again I have an end tail. Then I'm going to do my T by the way, entail is literally a word I just made up. <laughs> That's not an actual lettering term, so if you don't see other people using it, that is why. <laughs> but it's very important and an important thing to keep track of. So do my second T, entail, E. That's where I want that one to go. I'm going to continue that and do my R. And I'm going to stop there, so sometimes I'll stop within the letter itself too. R is one where I typically stop and then I end it and then I go back and I do my little additional pieces. By picking up our pen it gives us so much more control versus if you get trapped in kind of that cursive mindset 
because it looks like cursive and it is in a way then you'll just like keep that flow of it and it doesn't allow you the flexibility that you need for hand lettering so for example if I wanted to do a bounce effect I could only do that easily by picking up my pen if I tried to do that doing cursive it would look something like this I see I can't even like do it without picking up my pen Okay, so that doesn't look too good, but if I can do that by picking up my pen, so I might do the L, have my little end tail, do the E, have my little end tail, do the T, I'm going to bring it down a little further, have my little end tail, do my other T, do that one a little higher, have my E, Make that go a little bit higher. Bring it down. And I need to add a little bit there because my end tail kind of went further than my. And then I would do a little flourish. So that little pause in between is going to really bring your hand lettering to the next level. My fifth and last tip to you guys in this video is going to be to just practice the alphabet and try out different styles. And what I mean by that is I've kind of been showing you in this little example set with letter, the same exact style. It's basically just cursive. My R's, my T's, my L's all kind of look the same. But there's tons of different ways to do letters. So, for example, I might do my A where it's really round and wide, like that. I might do a really thin A, like that. I might do an A that has a really high curvy line above it. I might have my A be like have a little curl in it. Perhaps I want my A to connect only at the top. So you can see there that I just did five different A's, changing really tiny little details, but that can matter a lot when you have the actual lettered piece in front of you. And so that would be my last tip to you guys, is to just try out a ton of different letters. A good way to do this is what I call alphabet soup. So I like to create just a list of all of the different possible styles of one letter that I can think of. To do this, I often go to Pinterest or Instagram and find hand-lettered pieces that I really like and then pick out the letters that stand out to me as cool variations of it. And I'll copy them into here. And so this creates kind of like a database, if you will, of letters that I can then refer to and access to use in my own pieces, but also provides a ton of practice because I'm trying out different letters and constantly sticking to that upstroke and downstroke. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I know it wasn't like the prettiest hand lettering video, but hopefully it was super informative and helped you to get a better grasp of these concepts. I would love your feedback, so please do comment down below. And I will definitely be making a video on blending hand lettering as well, so mostly working with these lovely Chambo brush pens, since I kind of gave them a bad rap in this video because I don't consider them the best for beginners, but they are really fun for other things like blending. So I'll make a video on that as well. If you're new to my channel, please do subscribe. I love making videos that are tutorials, everything journaling related, and art and DIY for you guys. So just comment down below, let me know what videos you'd like to see from me next. And of course, be sure to follow me on Instagram for more inspiration. You can also find me on Facebook and in the Scribble Bookcase Creatives Cocoon, which is a fun little slice of this community where we get to hang out and share our work with each other. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I wish you the best of luck in your own hand lettering journey. Bye!